First up is Let Him Go, which stars Diane Lane and Kevin Costner, and I don't even know where to begin with this film. I was about six minutes in when I realized this film is definitely not for me and I don't think I'm going to enjoy it. And about two hours later, I was correct from those first six minutes. It takes place in, I think, the 1950s and in Montana. And Kevin Costner plays a retired sheriff and Diane Lane plays his wife. And they, this is in the sort of immediate trailers, I even think, they lose their adult son. And so it's sort of about dealing with, they have a grandson and then a daughter-in-law. I guess you don't technically stop really being a daughter-in-law even though your son dies, but either way, Way, the mother of their grandchild and then she gets remarried and falls in with some funky people and I just oh god this is one of those films that I feel like is designed for a very specific audience and not that there's anything technically wrong with this but it's a white audience it skews to a male audience and in this case I think geographically we're talking about a more midwestern audience there is nothing wrong with being in any of those categories but you still need to be a good story and this is not a good story. So even if you fall into any of those or all of those categories, so their target audience, it's not a good movie. As I was watching it, I was like, maybe my dad who is you know, a white man and an older white man at this point might like this more than I did. But even he at the end of it was like, nope, that was bad, you were right. So I feel like it's a failing on multiple accounts. The acting is, ugh. There are all these sort of very stoic, and I think that's sort of where the Midwestern or Montana or sort of ranch mentality comes in, where they're supposed to be these understated, not super emotional characters. But it's a film about interpersonal relationships, and I want to see some sort of emoting between these characters. And then really what it comes down to is the motivations and the plot points make no sense about... A third of the way through the film up to up to that point it's like okay and I'm, I'm going to go into a little bit of spoilers here but there's plenty for you to unravel but I don't want you to watch this movie so just be warned basically their former daughter-in-law gets remarried and he is a questionable character so okay fine I understand their grandparents their motivation is they are looking out for the well-being of their grandson he is their only remaining tie to their son and you know grandparents in general they're loving Great, no problem. I understand that. They want to save her from this, you know, again, slight spoiler, but abusive relationship that she has entered into. Fine, those motivations make sense. Then, again, I'm just really gonna spoil this thing. Then she ends up going with him to his family and they end up being really the villains of the story. But their motivation for all of their actions is not justifiable. Leslie Manville plays the matriarch of this family and they're the wee boys and they keep saying wee boy in this film as if we're supposed to know what that is and the, at first I was like is this a type of person is this perhaps like an obscure Native American tribe I don't know about what does it mean to be a wee boy no it's just this random family in the middle of nowhere okay fine but you have to let us know that as an audience and I do think they tried to sort of set it up as these you know ominous characters but it's just it's so sloppy in how it does it and then again so once you get to the wee boys then it falls apart in terms of motivations aside from maybe trying to say that they are truly unhinged people that's their motivation for this film but it just and then there's this whole side plot with Boo Boo Stewart playing a, a Native American kid who they run into on the side of the road and he's part of this and I'm just like why are you trying to shoehorn this plot in I wish it had just been more straightforward and maybe it had just been a detective story about them trying to find her right because okay well if he's a former sheriff that should come into it and there's all these things that it starts to hint at there's this moment where he buys whiskey in the middle of the day Kevin Costner's character buys whiskey in the middle of the day I'm like oh is he an alcoholic is this an issue between them and then it just sort of is never addressed again and then you've got Booba Stewart's character who he suddenly spews his life story to Diane Lane and you're just like, okay, why? And they have a reason for him to come back, but it's just sort of like, if you're going to have him be one dimensional, just have him be one dimensional. I feel like we have seen stories like this before and they have been done so much better. There are so many elements that they just sort of threw at the wall and tried to see what would stick. And there are a dozen movies, some of which are starring the people in this movie, like, Kevin Costner has plenty of other Western-ish movies that you could watch in lieu of this that are a million times better. Diane Lane, by the way, Diane Lane is not old enough to play a grandmother. Yes, I know people were having kids younger back then and the idea that she has an adult but young adult son, fine. But really, they're just trying, they kept trying to sort of like age her up. But she looks flawless. Good for you, Diane Lane. You look great. Not that looks are more important than anything else, but I'm just saying trying to sell off these sort of like 50s actresses as grandmothers is very frustrating. 
I don't know what Leslie Manville's doing here. She is a super talented actress. She just chewed all of the scenery. It made no sense to have her character there. Don't watch this movie. Don't don't waste your time. It's inelegant. It's confusing at points. It's not entertaining. And entertaining is sometimes a word we associate with like humor or romance or anything along those lines. No, there are plenty of Western films that aren't even necessarily super action-packed thrillers that are entertaining but don't have to be comedies. They are, they keep us enthralled. This did not. I was so bored and hated watching it. And very rarely will I be willing to talk this much about a plot in a film that has only just been released. But the fact that this was just so bad and I want to save you from it, that should tell you something. So please avoid this film. I'm only going to give it one out of five. And then the other film for this week is Holidate, which is on Netflix. And this is one where I thought going into it, I was going to hate it. And then it sort of started to redeem itself. And then I didn't like it by the end. But this is because it disappointed me because it showed glimmers of hope. At least with Let Him Go, I feel like, thank you for showing me in the first six minutes I was going to hate it. I, Holidate is on Netflix. It stars Emma Roberts and Luke Bracey. You know, it's so early to be having these holiday-esque films. I will say it does not just center around Christmas. They do cover a gamut of holidays, so good for them. It's a typical rom-com. I watched the trailer and it sort of auto-played on Netflix and I texted my friends Jackie and Matt and I said, I think I'm gonna hate probably how much I get invested in this. And I started to get invested in it as I watched it. And then the second half, or maybe the sort of last third of it, just completely unravels. And it feels like it should be really hard to do in a film that really is following in a very well-worn territory of these rom-com type things. There are plenty of formulas that you can follow and that doesn't make you unoriginal. It just makes you sort of following along things that we are used to. You can sort of diverge from them and be innovative, and that's great. And sometimes you can fall into them, and as long as you do them well, that's also great. That's what we're looking for as an audience. However, Holiday decided to do this thing where they became very self-referential about this stuff. And it actually reminded me of Isn't It Romantic with Rebel Wilson a little bit, which the premise of that is she gets sort of trapped in a rom-com. And that, at least in terms of the way it references romance movies, it, it very much embraced it and it made fun of it, but it did it in a way that was consistent. And I will fully acknowledge I watched this on a plane. And so it's one of those things where I feel like I'm much more generous on airplanes because of the sort of cabin pressure, whatever it may be. But we all there's I think there's actually science about how we all get more emotional on airplanes. Anyway, it reminded me of Isn't It Romantic in the sense that there are multiple times that it references, oh, real life isn't like a romantic comedy movie. Okay, fine, but you're in a romantic comedy movie and many of the things you're doing are playing into these tropes. So you can't be so cynical about it and not go all in, but also expect your audience to feel generous towards these characters because you really you're making fun of your audience in many senses, right? These are the people who are probably going to be watching this film. So there's a line between tongue in cheek and a line between outright insulting them. And, it's, and really they're drawing attention to the flaws in the movie by pointing out constantly and comparing themselves to romantic comedies, but they're also producing one. It's just... It was very frustrating, and and that was where it sort of started to fall apart. Emma Roberts as the star is kind of whatever for me. It, it was weird to me because she's only a couple years younger than I am, but I feel like she came onto the scene so young, but it was just enough of a, a difference that I was like, oh, you are a child. And so even seeing her as a nearly 30-year-old actress now, I'm still like, you're still a child. And also of note, the writer and director of Holiday is Tiffany Paulson, who wrote or co-wrote Nancy Drew, which Emma Roberts starred in, so I get the sense that maybe there was, maybe she was writing this for her. It also felt like this was written to try and shed some sort of good girl image that Emma Roberts has. And I don't actually know if she has a good girl image, but having her play this sort of flippant, cynical character was fine. I think it was trying to sort of make a statement on her part. I know a lot of her success was built on playing these young, family-friendly roles. That was the other thing about Holiday. From the trailer, it did not look super R-rated, and I don't even know if it technically has a rating because it is a Netflix film that went straight to streaming and it was clearly meant for streaming, but this film was way more mature and crass almost than I was expecting, especially from a Netflix film because I feel like they do try and keep them within a realm of family friendliness, but I actually enjoy that part of it. It really felt like the first half of it sort of knew what it was doing and then the second half of the film deteriorated. The premise is Emma Roberts plays a single woman who works from home, which is funny that this comes out now 
because obviously they were filming it before everyone was working from home. But she is single, she has siblings who are married, her mother is pressuring her, society is pressuring her. She has this aunt, played by Kristen Chenoweth, who I think is the best part of the movie, who has this premise of the holiday, who is just sort of supposed to be a disposable person you bring with you to holiday events where there's no real emotional investment, but it buffers out the questions of, you know, why are you here alone or people trying to set you up? And okay, fine, I will totally go along with that. Then Emma Roberts meet cutes Luke Bracey at a mall. Also, I really was wondering, is this movie sponsored by malls? I've never seen so many characters spend time in a mall except for maybe Jingle All the Way with Arnold Schwarzenegger. It was, it's very bizarre and it's also very weird to watch now in 2020 when you're like, haha, malls, gatherings, how ridiculous. Anyway, they decide to be each other's holidays. You can guess the rest. And I think the first half is mostly spending time with them on these holidays and their relationship developing. And it's a little, it's trying to be a little when Harry met Sally in terms of their dynamic and find whatever that's, that's well tread ground. And it's not something that I think anybody in the rom-com audience complains about seeing again, if it's done well. And then it sort of falls apart. It gets convoluted, it gets complicated. I'm not even gonna go into it. I was rooting for them from the start. And then they tried to dial up Emma Roberts's flaws and cynicism and they even acknowledge it in the movie. They're like, oh, I hate it in a romantic comedy when the two main characters just decide that they can't be together because of some arbitrary reason. Okay, well, that's what you did in this film. Why would you say that you hate something, explicitly point out that it is a weak storytelling moment and then actually engage in it? I just like, it lost its way. It lost its way the second half. It totally fell apart. If you are truly desperate for distraction, as I very much was when I watched this, fine, whatever, maybe watch the first half and then just tap out, I don't know. There's a million more of these types of films coming. It very much felt like there are plenty of things made for streaming and Netflix that I'm like, oh yeah, this could be a theatrical release and I could see, you know, maybe an art house or something like that. This one is one of those examples of something that really is a quantity over quality scenario. And that's such a bummer because it is playing into this sort of undermining of the quality of streaming content. And especially because we are leaning so much more on streaming content content right now. It's a notch in the argument for, oh, these aren't valid movies. Not that it's not a valid movie, but it is absolutely settling. And so if you feel like settling right about now, go ahead and watch The Holiday. I'm only going to give it two out of five.